Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you will not believe it, but I am on the International Bridge at Progreso, and I am with an entire line of Russians. Three, two, one. So here at the International Bridge in Progreso, Texas, about to cross into Mexico. And Rio Grande River, Texas is, <laughs> I can't even point, man. Texas is there, Mexico is there. Signs of inflation, saw some on the way here, just parking in the parking lot used to be two dollars now it's four dollars so it's going to be interesting if i see signs of inflation in mexico because i've seen some in texas all over the place so here we go let me see and right out there you could see a mexican national or who knows from what country or what nationality they are don't know they could be bathing in the river or maybe preparing to cross who knows okay let's go Dentista, amigo. Médico general. No. Está bien, Chen. ¿Verdad? So we just had a haircut. And I used to pay $6. This is right before I left for Moscow in May of 2023. Just paid $7. This is um, about half, actually less than half of what I pay uh, in Moscow for the last haircut that I had, which was about 1,100 rubles, more or less about 12 US dollars. And this one was seven, tipped him $3. So, $10 haircut. Not bad, not bad. Let's go check out what it is. Chori queso. This is uh, cheese, melted cheese with Mexican chorizo and corn tortillas. We call it chori queso and it is delicious. Hey, hey. 
Walking through the streets of uh, Nuevo Progreso, they kind of remind me of uh, Istanbul, Turkey. Kind of a little bit of the same vibe, but uh, a little bit more jumping. Check it out. like most places here in Mexico, especially on the border, they speak Spanish and English. Extremely bilingual here. The poverty here cannot be hidden. nor can the fact that who their customers are because from the writing on the wall and this door it says we speak English in Mexico means that they are catering to English speaking American customers this is the border be sure and ask for the special prices, guys. That's where it's at. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you will not believe it, but I am on the International Bridge at Progreso, and I am with an entire line of Russians, some ethnic Russians, some from post-Soviet uh, Union uh, republics, uh, many Orthodox, some even Muslim. And uh, their story is very, very interesting. And I have one friend here by the name of Robert. And uh, Robert comes from, where do you come from? Tatarstan, Russia. Tatarstan in Russia. Wow, wow. And very interesting. Uh, Miroslav, who is back there, he is from Moscow. And not only is he from Moscow, he lives near the same street that I live on in Obrena district. This is Bibienka. And can you believe that? It is such a small, small world. Incredible. So this entire line here is uh, ethnic uh, Russian 
and from the post-Soviet uh, republics waiting to cross into uh, America. Some have appointments with CBP, some do not. Uh, it's just, wow, wow. Considering that I just arrived from, from Moscow on uh, Saturday, this is incredible, incredible. And the line goes all the way back and all the way forward. Wow. So this entire line is, as I said, ethnic Russians. And uh, I want to ask, Uh, извините, uh, вы говорите uh, по-английски? Нет. По-английски? No. no. <laughs> вы говорите по-английски? Yeah. Да. Ah, okay. Wow, what an interesting border crossing <laughs> that was crossing back into the United States, back into Texas, from Progreso, Mexico, where I met a whole line of Russians, some ethnic Russians, uh, some from the former uh, republics of the Soviet Union, who are attempting to uh, take advantage of America's open borders and uh, clean uh, what they believe to be a uh, government back in Russia or in their former uh, Soviet republics that uh, is not aligned with their uh, best intents best intentions, so to speak. Uh, privately, I talked with many off camera and asked why they wanted to emigrate to the West, to the United States. Many expressed that they wanted to live in California, or some wanted to live in Austin. Um, they wanted to live in very liberal uh, communities, and many expressed that uh, hopefully one day Russia and the United States could be friends again, but this would not happen until maybe uh, as one uh, woman told me uh, when Putin was dead. Uh, of course, I did not tell her that I am uh, a proud member of uh, Ramanda Putina, but uh, yeah, the fact that I'm only here temporarily and I want to return back to Russia um, seemed to kind of uh, surprise some of these people. They were wondering. Why does this guy who lives in the United States, who has what we want, want to live in Russia? And of course, I told them um, I was in Russia for love, for one. And that's the main reason I'm there. But the secondary reason I'm there, and I told them this, is that, um, you know, it turns out that Russia's values uh, match my personal values and what I feel is important for me and my family and my loved ones, and that I feel that uh, on the whole, my country is not the same country it was, say, 15, 20 years ago.
certainly not the country that um, that I grew up in. Um, the political landscape has changed, and not only politics, but uh, in uh, society as well. Very, very interesting. I have not <laughs> seen this many Russians, Russian-speaking people in one place, especially on this border, and never in my wildest dreams that I think I would encounter some today, but I did. Uh, very, very interesting. Uh, I'll put more of my thoughts together, and, uh, and we'll talk more about this. But very, very interesting. One of the more interesting aspects of this conversations that I had with some of these uh, immigrants was I was so excited to speak Russian because I haven't spoken Russian since I arrived in Texas. Uh, and so I wanted to speak Russian to practice more. And, uh, you know, my Russian isn't all that great. <laughs> Not right now. It is a uh, survival level, if anything. And most of these people uh, immediately uh, said, that's okay, we can speak English, we, we prefer to speak English. So I don't know if this is um, something subconscious that they didn't want to speak their native language with me, uh, which I wanted to, but uh, I, I did notice that, and uh, I noticed that from, from many. And I, I even went around asking uh, who spoke uh, who spoke English because I wanted to talk to him. And <laughs> one uh, one man uh, uh, said, uh, "No, <laughs> uh, we don't speak uh, Bangliski. We don't speak English." And I just turned around. And I said, "No," and he said, "No." And of course, I laughed, and he laughed. I just kept uh, walking right on by. But um, very, very interesting. I did not expect this. And uh, uh, many mixed feelings because uh, from a humanitarian uh, standpoint, I hate to see anybody uh, suffer and just have to wait in line and stuff but that's a choice these people made they made a choice to come so uh, but at the same time uh, I I feel for them because I think the the America that they're looking for uh, doesn't exist to, to put it bluntly to put it very bluntly the America they seek doesn't exist, at least not at this point, not at this time, and not uh, under the present administration. Okay, just my thoughts. So I traveled to Texas in early December 2023 to visit family and friends for the Christmas holidays. And no trip to the Rio Grande Valley is complete with at least one day trip to this border town of Progreso. Now, Progreso is a very small, literally one horse town. It's a one road town. It exists purely for Texas tourism. Um, it is full of dental offices, medical clinics, pharmacies, uh, restaurants, curio shops, um, bars, restaurants, things of that nature. It is a relatively safe town in that the cartels tend to leave uh, Nuevo Progreso alone. Uh, there's very little crime, street crime. Uh, you really don't see it. It is a relatively safe place to be. Now, the normal traffic that you see the pedestrian traffic crossing this border is usually American citizens, 
uh, folks from the valley who are traveling to uh, the border city for the day and going back. You rarely see any illegal immigration occurring at this port of entry. So this is my backyard. I was born and raised in South Texas, this northern Mexico area. This is, like I said, this is my playground. This is my backyard. This is where I grew up. And not only um, did I live there for uh, more than 50 years, but I worked in law enforcement in this area for uh, over 30 years. So immigration is front and center every day in the Rio Grande Valley. This is not a political talking point that you hear about uh, every election cycle. Uh, this is not something that um, uh, you just barely hear about in the evening news. This is every day. So drug smuggling, human trafficking, um, these are everyday occurrences. This is part of life. Um, that we've come to know, unfortunately, in the Rio Grande Valley. Um, even though I didn't deal with immigration issues on a daily basis, we did deal with the crime, all of the associated crime that comes along with drug smuggling and human trafficking and the illegal immigration um, issue. So this is something that I know intimately well. Now, drug smuggling, human trafficking, illegal immigration, they all follow patterns. They all have profiles that you can um, rely on and kind of classify and tell what's happening. What I saw on the border um, that Saturday uh, does not fit the normal pattern of illegal immigration or human trafficking. I'm going to tell you why. This particular day, I visited Mexico with a couple of friends of mine that are still in law enforcement. And when we were crossing back into Texas and we were walking across the bridge, uh, one of my friends uh, mentioned to me, she says, you know, these do not look like typical immigrants. They look like middle-class Anglo-Saxon white folks. <laughs> um, they look fairly well-educated. Um, they don't fit the profile of a typical illegal immigrant to the United States. That was one. The second thing is that there just wasn't one or two people or maybe one or two families. There were hundreds of these people. Uh, this did not occur by accident. And having private conversations off camera with some of these uh, immigrants, I asked them, how did you get from Russia to the border. I was very interested in uh, their uh, route of travel. And they said they traveled uh, some from Moscow to Tbilisi, Georgia. From Tbilisi, Georgia, they traveled to Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. How they got there, I do not know. But they said from Puerto Vallarta, they were bussed by a United Nations charter from Puerto Vallarta to uh, Progreso, Mexico. Uh, some had been there up to two weeks. Uh, this one particular person that I was talking to had only uh, been there for two days. And they were waiting for um, their turn to meet with CBP officials. This is Customs and Border Protection of the United States to file for um, asylum in the United States. Um, I was just like, wow, that is one heck of a trip. I then asked them, um, how much did they pay 
to the cartels for this travel from Puerto Vallarta to uh, Progreso because this is not free. Uh, this is controlled uh, by the Mexican cartels. And nobody travels through there without paying tribute uh, and protection to the cartels. And this person told me they paid $150 per person to the cartels for transport and safe transport. That is extremely, extremely cheap because uh, human smugglers pay anywhere um, and charge anywhere in, in the neighborhood of $6,000 to $10,000 per person for this journey through Mexico to the northern border. It is not cheap. The fact that they only paid $150 per person means that someone or some organization paid the balance. Plain and simple. There's a couple of other things that, that I want to point out that I noticed uh, within this group. And I'm going to be showing you some B-roll here, but I want you to notice that these are families, young families, father, wife, children, none of them look to be in any danger. They don't have the look of fear in their eyes. They um, have a sense of adventure uh, as to where they're going and, and, and what uh, awaits them in their future. This is not typical of... Um, illegal immigration. Um, the women did not seem to be in fear of uh, being raped or molested. The children uh, seemed to be uh, content, happy. The men were calm, um, not quite as vigilant as I would have imagined. Uh, I would be in that particular situation of watching uh, and seeing what's going around and happening around you, uh, they seemed very calm. As I talked with these immigrants and I asked them, where do you want to go in the United States? Where do you see yourself living? And one of the most common answers uh, was California. And one person told me um, they wouldn't mind living in Austin. And they, they asked me about Austin. And I said, well, okay, well, Austin is, uh, you know, California 2.0. Very liberal city in Texas. And um, so we talked about California, and I told him, uh, I gave him my honest opinion, and I said, you know, I, I don't believe um, California is uh, the same place that it was 10, 15, even 20 years ago. Uh, there's a lot of crime, a lot of unemployment, uh, prices for housing for food, for just everyday living are extremely, extremely high, uh, as well as taxes. There is a uh, homeless problem. There is a street drug problem, crime problem. Um, it would not be my first choice. Um, as a man, as a uh, leader of a family, I would not recommend taking my family to uh, California. And um, they seemed a little surprised and maybe not so believing uh, of me. That's okay. Um, one of the other things that I want to mention to you is I just saw a podcast with Patrick Bed David uh, in Valuetainment yesterday. And he showed this particular slide. Uh, it's from his ex uh, Twitter account. And he says that um, very alarming statistic. I will read it here with you. 16 states don't require any photo ID to vote, 22 states require photo ID. Texas is one of those states that does require photo ID. 
there's 8.4 million illegal immigrant encounters since 2021. And I heard that the number could reach uh, as high as 18 million illegal immigrant encounters by CBP by election day, 2024. Now with these people saying that they want to go to California, California being one of the states that you don't have to prove um, residency or citizenship to vote, uh, one has to question, what are the motives behind this forced immigration? What's also interesting is how some of these forces play both sides because we know that this, this type of forced immigration, this, this, this is encouraged immigration into the United States. But then you do have some voices that are controlled opposition. And I'm not going to mention any of these bloggers' names, but you can look them up. And to me, they're controlled opposition because the first thing that they're doing is they're down here on the border and they're showing this illegal immigration uh, and these migrants coming from Russia and the former Soviet uh, republics. And the first thing they're saying is, you see, this is Putin pushing these people toward the United States to destabilize the United States, to get these people to vote, to, to destabilize from within. This is incredible that this is happening in 2024. Um, I sometimes don't even recognize the country of my birth. Incredible. Do your research, look into this, and you'll find the answers that you're looking for. Anyway, I hope you found this video informative. If you did, give me a like and subscribe. Appreciate it. We'll see you in the next video. Пока.